Okay, uh, this video, uh, we talk about sex, okay? This video is on uh, hypodynamic pituitary gonad axis, and also we talk about gonad development. So the uh, objectives are to understand the hormonal control of two things, you know, sex differentiation and also pituitation, all right? So that is about pregnancy, giving birth, and so on. As you can imagine, there are so many diseases related to these aspects of uh, hormonal control from the gonad and then leading to different problems. So we're going to have three videos. The first one is on uh, hypothalamic control of gonadotrophics. Okay? The second one will focus on gonad development and uh, sex determination or sometimes we call it the sexual differentiation and then the last video is on pregnancy, pacturition and lactation including we'll discuss uh, contraception or the use of contraceptive pills and also we'll do some uh, revision exercise for the discussions okay so uh, yes first slide so what make a man a man I mean a real man you know masculine man before the uh, sexual characteristics and what made a woman a woman with all these uh, female characteristics okay I may be a bit old school I use this uh, Marilyn Monroe and also uh, what's this guy's name uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger you know you may use your own idol you know the female idol but obviously there are some uh, key things here and we start from this hormone in the hypothalamus, it's called GnRH, gonadotrophins releasing hormone. So from the hypothalamus, we send a signal to the pituitary gland. In the pituitary gland, we have uh, gonadotrophins. Gonadotrophin is to promote the gonad to produce uh, sex hormones. So uh, the gonadotrophins include several different uh, types. Uh, mainly two types are uh, luteinizing hormone and also follicle stimulating hormone. LH is luteinizing hormone, FSH is follicle stimulating hormone. As you can see, that uh, FSH is to go to the follicle to stimulate those uh, follicles to produce uh, hormones like estrogen or progesterone, uh, contributing to the female characteristics. And also, as you all know, in the testes, we have the testosterone, and later on, forming those uh, male characteristics. Okay, and also the feedback mechanisms, the feedback loop from the ovaries. We have estrogen and progesterone going back to GnRH. Uh, I mean, to to the hypothalamus to stop the production of GnRH. And the same thing is true in the pituitary gland to stop the production of LH and FSH. And also from the testes in male body, we have this uh, testosterone. Oh, we'll go back to the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus to stop this. So uh, the whole thing is kind of like uh, you know controlling uh, with a feedback mechanism, balancing the hormones are very important. Otherwise, uh, you may make some uh, people. Uh, like a man but then the behavior and also other things that would become a woman okay that could be quite uh, uh, important issues nowadays I'm not talking about homosexuals I'm talking about become a feminist all right and then uh, so to sum up we have this uh, hypothalamic control of gonadotrophins or hypothalamic pituitary and gonad axis so from the uh, hypothalamus, we have GnRH producing gonadotrophins. Gonadotrophins sometimes uh, are alone as gonadotrophin 1 and 2 and 3 in different animals. Okay? And then for gonadotrophin 3, they are more relating to the uh, sexual behavior or cultural behavior in lower vertebrates or other animals. But in mammals, we mainly have this LH and FSH, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone from the pituitary gland 
going to the gonads, either in the testes to produce testosterone, or in the ovaries to produce estrogens and progesterone. Now, first, let's take a look further down here. The structure of GnRH. GnRH is actually a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 DECA peptide okay, with 10 amino acids. So the gene encoding for these are people GnRH. So this is a GnRH, it's a peptide. It has a secondary structure like this, a flipping around, and then you can see some special uh, uh, amino acids forming this uh, brain structure. And this uh, receptor is again a seven transmembrane domain, uh, G protein coupled receptors leading to calcium pathway and also protein kinase C pathway inducing the beta gene and also the alpha gene, for example, in this case for those uh, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone and also the uh, thyrotrophin uh, or thyro. Uh, stimulating hormones, uh, those are, you know, body peptides with two subunits, alpha and beta. The alpha is usually, a, it's, it's actually a more consistent one, and then the beta one would be more hormone specific. So, you, you can imagine that the scientists have already developed these uh, different kinds of GnRH analogs using as agonists to treat infertility, okay? In some cases, perhaps uh, GnRH as antagonist. You may design some analog as antagonist, perhaps for birth control. Now, for these uh, hypothalamic pituitary gonad axis, as you can see, the uh, Hypothalamus, actually, this uh, GnRH is a small peptide. It comes down from the neuron, you, you know, the neuron coming down here, and then through the vessels and capillaries going down to the pituitary gland. So, GnRH is, is, is actually coming or processed in specific neuron, going to the uh, pituitary gland, producing. Uh, Gonadotrophs. tubes. Gonad tubes are the cells in the pituitary gland specializing in producing luteinizing hormone. And then if it acts on uh, latex cells in the testes, it will produce testosterone from the testes. And this testosterone is required for sperm formation or spermatogenesis. The same thing is true here for the formation of, uh, from the pituitary gland, from the gonadotrophs tubes forming this uh, follicle stimulating hormone. Follicle stimulating hormone also going to the testes. It stimulates a special kind of uh, sertoli cells from the testes. And here, the sertoli cell would also produce inhibit to inhibit all this uh, feedback mechanism pathway to inhibit back uh, to the gonadotrophs. tubes. We'll come back to more details how and what follicle stimulating hormone. Uh, follicle stimulating hormone, of course, would act on the ovaries. But here, follicle stimulating hormone would also turn on these sartorial cells to produce a special kind of testosterone. Okay? Uh, we'll come back to that later. And then up here in the uh, hypothalamus, uh, there are other peptides, and one of the most famous one is called PEPCAP. Pituitary adenocyclase activating body peptide. It also plays an important role in this uh, gonadotrophin, known as uh, GTH, production, among all other things, in the pituitary gland. So, PEPCAP is also controlling the release of uh, GTH1, 2, and 3, or follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, also controlled by uh, PEPCAP as a releasing peptide. So it's not just uh, GnRH doing the major job, okay? With this understanding for the testes, we then look into the job of follicle stimulating hormone. Of course, it's go to the follicles to stimulate one very important thing, ovulation. Uh, so this is the cycle of ovulation, and then at the same time, later on, the uh, luteinizing hormone uh, would come out at the peak 
luteinizing hormone is also required and control ovulation. Uh, and actually, to be exact, is the formation of corpus luteum and also the egg to release out that is controlled by luteinizing hormone. As you can see, uh, at the same time, estrogen would come out before ovulation, and then you can see the stimulation of estrogen to ovulation, so the egg would come out. And then uh, uh, at each cycle, at the end, we have the progesterone coming out. So progesterone is coming out here. So the plasma of progesterone will come out after fertilization. Now that is very important. Without fertilization, of course, we don't need this uterine lining. So progesterone is actually stimulated by fertilization of the egg and then uterine lining coming out. If, uh, uh, if, if there's no pregnancy, the uterine lining would fall off. So bleed occurs, so bleeding coming out, so the whole lining would come out. That would finish the period. And then you can see the follicular phase in the beginning. At that time here, it is this what we call the menstruation uh, period. All right? So that would take roughly about 28 days or 30 something days of course that would vary in different people. And then of course you would uh, appreciate the uh, cyclic control by GnRH inducing these uh, particles stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. And when they go down to the ovaries, we stimulate estrogen and also progesterone. Maybe estrogen here stimulate ovulation. All right, so the egg will be released each month there will be an egg produced for mature woman, okay? And uh, if uh, there's a plasma uh, progesterone level up, if there's uh, fertilization, and that would form this uterine lining to prepare the fertilized egg to be embedded here. So we'll come back in the third video to talk the details on this. Now, this is a rather complicated uh, slide explaining all these different steroids hormones so this part is known as uh, steroid neutrinosis so what I'm trying to explain to you is that all these steroids hormones actually they all come from cholesterol okay? cholesterol has uh, 21 carbon so step number one we have this enzyme uh, cleavage we call this uh, cholesterol citrine cleavage enzyme to remove the citrine here, to engage the cholesterol into the mitochondria or into the tissues, all right? And then the next step, here we need this free beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase, or we call it HSD, uh, to convert the uh, pregranulone into progesterone. Now, remember we talked about progesterone, is here. And also that would be converted into 17-alpha hydroxyprogesterone. And uh, the next one we pay attention to is this enzyme, is 17-beta hydroxylase. You can see counting the number of uh, the carbon position, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this is 17 up here. And here there's a hydroxyl group added to engage uh, from 21 carbon down into 17 carbon. So we need the lightase enzyme to remove this and then forming this dihydro EP androsterone and then moving on to this direction and this androsterone uh, moving into forming testosterone mainly in the testes of course. Now let's get back up here. Hydroxylase. So hydroxylase is here, the deoxy corticosterone, so the uh, hydroxylase would add the OH group here and moving into this direction forming aldosterone synthase forming aldosterone. Before that, number 4 is this enzyme 11 beta hydroxylase, so adding one extra OH group here forming this structure, this structure and then we control uh, aldosterone uh, synthase uh, forming this aldosterone we also, oh sorry, we also have this uh, corticosteroid and also cortisol, ok, 
Okay, so these are the major what we call 11, uh, 21 uh, carbon mineral particles. And down here in, for the androgen, we have uh, the lysate, uh, lysate uh, cleaving down into 19 carbon. So uh, we have these uh, forming the structure 6 here. Now this is a very important step here. Remember there's a total cell I told you about in the testes. It can produce or induce by FSH to produce this 5-alpha uh, reductase. So 5-alpha reductase is to uh, 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 here is the, the hydrogen added here. You can notice the difference between the male hormone of testosterone and also the female hormone of estradiol is only in here but instead of uh, oxygen double bond here is the hydroxyl group here added by these enzymes a very important enzyme known as C19 or silicone P450 19 or named as aromatase so aromatase uh, in the uh, female organ uh, convert this uh, 19 carbon into this uh, 18 carbon estrone or estradiol sometimes we call it 17 alpha 20 beta uh, uh, 17 alpha is this bonding here all right and also 20 beta is up there it's it's trial uh, these are the uh, 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 female or estrogen so female hormones are leading to the formation of female characteristics so uh, uh, the uh, purple one are those are happening in the mitochondria and then the green one are those enzymes actually uh, in the uh, smooth uh, ER of smooth endoplasmic reticulum okay so this is mainly in the mitochondria converting the formation of mineral corticals okay the rest are mainly in the ER so uh, before we move on to the next topic uh, yes, hormonal control of glucocorticoids and sex hormones because they're all from cholesterol. So as you can see that uh, in the cholesterol, we have to convert this uh, with these uh, enzymes, uh, aromatic, uh, not aromatic, sorry, it is a steroid uh, uh, enzyme to engage the cholesterol to form this uh, P450 side chain cleavage, uh, leading to uh, pregranulon. And then the star protein would engage the whole thing into the uh, mitochondria or into the membrane. And then uh, we have this uh, progesterone and also 17 hydroxyl progesterone. And then on the left hand side, just like the previous slide on the top, sorry about this, here, okay, so the star protein would engage the whole thing back into here. And then uh, moving to form cortisol. So this is a pathway actually happening in the adrenal gland. Okay, the adrenal gland actually this will go back to the feedback mechanism, they inhibit the adrenal cortical trophic hormone, ACTH. So ACTH uh, uh, from the pituitary gland will go down to the adrenal gland and then stimulating the formation of, of cortisol. The sex hormone uh, in the test is the same uh, protein also engage cholesterol but then for example in the test is moving into uh, formation of testosterone uh, the sertoliol cell from the test is to produce this 5-alpha reductase forming dihydrotestosterone now, this is a very important hormone engaging us men into this androgen pathway leading to the formation of male sex organs and then uh, remember testosterone will further be converted into estradiol and uh, the aromatase or CYP19, silicon p 19 in the ovary will convert the is, uh, uh, testosterone into estradiol leading to the uh, estrogen pathway uh, forming those uh, female characteristics these are the feedback loop going to go back to the uh, pituitary gland to inhibit luteinizing hormone. So luteinizing hormone is here, the lactic follicle stimulating hormone is here. 
stimulating the formation of a dihydrotestosterone and also uh, we find this enzyme in the Sartorial cell with uh, five alpha reductase stimulated by FSH. With that, we stop here and uh, move on to the next topic on uh, gonad development.